So today we're gonna to talk about the five things that I like about the Sony RXO and the five things I don't like about the Sony RXO. Crazy mother. Well, you've got the intro, so I'm not going to bore you with the details. We're going to dive right into the background here. So why did I get the Sony RXO? Well, hey, real quick, though, um, real quick shout out to Mark and his channel. Links below. He's the one who actually, um, while I was writing the script for this, actually I am me about my unboxing video, presented a really good question. I already going to put the video out here, so here it is. But hey, link below, Mark's channel, great photographer, great video, way better quality than what I deliver. but. I'm still growing and I'm still trying and I'm going to keep pushing. But hey, so here we go. Quick background on why I decided to get this. So originally, <clears throat> um, I was perfectly content and very satisfied with the GoPro lineup. I mean, come on. I got the grip. I got all that stuff, right? Um, multiple cameras, all that stuff. And then just recently, in the past few weeks, um, it started bricking out. And I was starting to have issues and, you know, it's on recovery. It's working again. I'm filming with it right now because I only got one of these. I don't have the bankroll to afford more than one of these. But hey, Sony, if you want to send me one, cool. Speaking of which, this is not an endorsement from some uh, paid advertisement from Sony or sponsorship. I'm not that cool. Come on, let's be real. I got only less. I, I should be at 60 subscribers, hopefully, by the end of this video. Um, speaking of which, I'm trying to get to 100 by the by December and I'm trying to get to 10,000 views by December. So. Help me out, man. Help me reach my goal. Watch my videos. Subscribe to my channel. Tell your buddies. Share my videos. Do it all, right? Um, so back to what I was saying here. Uh, Mark asked a question. What were my original thoughts and what I thought about this camera? So I really wanted to sum it up real quick to five things I like and five things I dislike about the Sony RXO. Right? So rather than end with my dislikes, um, I'm going to end with my likes. So that means I'm going to have to start with my dislikes. So here's my five dislikes on the Sony RXO, right? So first off, um, the damn software. You know, the one thing I do find that's very convenient uh, on the GoPros is you plug them in, you can run iPhoto, loads right away, get all your videos, get everything, no problems. Um, with the Sony, you have to use that My Sony software, or my, my memory software, whatever it is, um, and it's a pain. I like that I can just put everything there. Essentially what I end up doing is I end up having to make two copies of everything in order to get it to work on my computer. Granted I own a Mac, so um, yeah. So that's one thing I dislike. The other is, um, number two has to be the focus angles and points on this. I haven't quite figured them all out, so that's currently my dislikes. It's kind of difficult to set them all that I've just decided not to play with them. Um, I've been looking, so hopefully somebody has a really cool tutorial on how to do that. Um, it's a great idea for a video once I figure it out. But yeah, the focus points and angles. I've gotten it to work where you can make it pop zoom on a touch, which is really cool. Um, but other than that, I haven't really figured it out and it's kind of a dislike um, for that reason. Not that it's like, you know, quality of angle or whatever. It's really just it's difficult for me to figure out. That's why I dislike it. Um, one thing I will have to say for number three, um, all right, not to bore you guys that aren't engineers um, or specifically electrical engineers, this is a 700 milliamp hour battery um, that basically runs on 3.7 volts. Um, this is a Sony RXO. Um, one of the interesting things is you have what's called known component um, consumption rate for electronics and um, I could do some really explain you some really cool ninja math on how I figured it out, but and tested it, and I'll prove it later. Um, running this camera at full capacity, at best rate, getting its best output, doesn't deliver you 35 minutes as promised. It actually only delivers you 37, uh, 27 minutes. Um, yeah, if you run this at its medium capacity and middle, at you know fair good quality, yeah, you can get 35 minutes, but 
what you buy this for, right, and why I purchased this mainly for, this gives me 27 minutes to do what I want to do with it. Um, yeah, I dislike that. Um, and it's not a bad dislike because, you know, people will say, oh, you're, you know, your, your drone only fills for 15 minutes, you know, at best. Um, yeah, it, at best I've gone out of it is 15 minutes. Um, I will admit that. Um, but that, I knew that buying that and I didn't buy it for that. I bought it to shoot, you know, two, three minute clip, quick clips, couple whips around here and there. Um, maybe get some cool angle shots. So it, it did that. Yeah. So that I understood, but you can buy extra batteries and the cool part was they were smart and they put a triple tray in there to charge with all your batteries with one plug. Um, you know, so yeah, the battery, it's one of my dislikes. My other dislikes has to be for number four, the cost of the accessories to this thing, right? It's cool that, you know, where the heck is it? Oh, it's over here. They give you this cage thing. Granted, I just you know so use some double double stick tape to stick this there. But they use some cage tape. Uh, they give you this plastic cage which protects the memory card from being popped out when you're using accessories, right? Uh, <clears throat> but the rest of the accessories are pretty expensive. I mean, the cage alone. Um, I found it on Amazon for about two forty nine ninety nine. That's pretty pricey for essentially a hunk of metal with a couple thread points through it. Now, um, kind of makes me regret that I sold my 3D printer because I could have just made my own. Um, like I did with some of my old GoPro accessories and Legos. Uh, so yeah, the cost of the accessories, I was trying to look over here if I had something else that was like a really cool universal accessory for everything. But yeah, the cost of the accessories, uh, would have to be number four. They're really, really pricey, but you know what? The other thing is, is you can get, you know, like you don't have to use a proprietary system to use a standard, you know, directional mic. So yeah, and now we'll go on to number five. Has to be this guy right here. The small screen, right? It's tiny. You, 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 it's good enough to spot what you need to spot, which is really good because you trust your eye and what you're actually viewing and what you're thinking you're viewing and uh, adjusting the light versus trying to chomp and look at everything here. Um, so yeah, it's it's good. It's just it's tiny. You know, it's tiny. That's the only thing, the only real thing I have a problem with it. I mean, if you look at it too, and you look at actually this surface area here. The screen actually ends right here. I mean, you could have sprung for a slightly larger screen here, Sony, you know, cut your profits down just a smidgen to make a little more screen here. Then it wouldn't make all the the uh, imagery and overlay that you have on the image when you're looking at it, see your settings and stuff, just cloud what you're actually trying to film. Uh, yeah, so those are my dislikes. All right, so here's a Sony RXO, and these are my five likes about it, right? So first off, you kind of heard me hinted on the dislikes was the proprietary adapters that you have to have in order to use your GoPro. This just uses standard stuff and you also heard me talk about um, an interesting accessory. Granted, I got this all tangled up, but yeah, this cage guy, or jobby jobby, um, clips right in like that and you can simply just plug in your mic and you're good to go. I don't need to, um, and it helps with a lot of frustration with mounting, you know. Um, I don't have the cage, we talked about that, it's expensive, so I had to, you know, adhere it to this little frame thing, but you don't have a whole lot of purchase here for stuff like this and still be able to grip it well, you know. That's the other thing is I use this guy most of the time to solve my grip issues. Um, but yeah, it's a little there. Uh, but now imagine if it had a proprietary box that you had to plug in and hide somewhere on top of all this stuff without clouding your screen. You know, it's like me trying to like say, okay, in order for me to use my mic, I have to put this 
I have to think about mounting this square somewhere on my already minimal real estate here in order to use one of these. That's kind of sucky. Um, so on to number two, um, real quick as I break this down, here is the position of the lens, why I like it. It's center. It makes it easy. Um, there's no distraction. And it's good to line up when you're trying to line up your shot or know where you're looking, you know, what you're trying to see. Um, it makes it really easy to go, yep, I'm in frame. Versus with the GoPro, it's like, uh, at what setting, at what, you know, focus point am I in, you know, the right focus is kind of, kind of tricky. Um, plus this has that little, nice little, it focuses in a little bit better too, uh, quality lens and sensor. Um, but all right, number three has to be the faster reset, right? Um, the GoPro, it's a little slow on the reset, which kind of sucks. Um, even when you remove and change all your settings, it still blows. Um, it's still like one, two, three, and then you're up and running. Then two, three, four, you know, right? it's really like, it takes a while. And especially when you stop and run restart, it goes to the safe saving phase and then trying to boot back up versus, so we power this on, right? I touch it once, it's recording. I touch it again, it stops recording. I immediately touch it again, it starts recording again, right? Um, which really makes that convenient when you're trying to, you know, save and not having to do a whole lot of edits or reset up your shot and want to be able to get it or you have to, you're trying to time something um, through a process. It, I like that this is much faster um, at that. So to on to number four, right? So my other like has to be, and it was one of also one of the main reasons why I chose to buy this in particular, right? is the better low light range, right? The ISO settings on this thing is uncanny. And the adjustable frame rate to allow more light in, it, it, more exposure on top of that, it just makes for magnificent low light condition shots, especially when you don't have to try to do a whole lot. Now, it doesn't film well in like total darkness, but it films pretty good um, in low light, not six in the morning light, I tried that, didn't work out too well but the GoPro would just have filled black space um, with its sensor. And sorry that I'm only saying this in comparison to the GoPro. I only talk about things I own and know about. Um, so I'm only thing I can compare it to is the GoPro. I had. We did have this cheap uh, uh, faux pro we bought um, and it was, uh, I could never get it to work. So, um, and it was mostly because I don't own a PC and it was mostly, it's driver software and stuff was only on a PC. So we abandoned that. Um, I actually have it on loan with a friend of mine's um, so he can film while he's cycling. I thought it was pretty cool. And he has a PC and it works fine for him. So it's cool. Um, but yeah, the low light range in this is pretty good in comparison to the GoPro. It's, you know, 12K up to, I mean, it, you basically turn a dark room into daylight um, if you want to and vice versa with like, I think it's like 200, you know, so you can make it dark if you really wanted to. Um, but yeah, so the low light range and number five has to be the HFR, the high frame rate. This thing does some ungodly slow-mo, right? Um, the only reason why you guys haven't seen any of it yet is um, I don't have fancy editing software. Um, I basically use iMovie to do everything and this at the max setting, at the max everything frame rate for the optimal slow-mo feature, um, my computer, my software can't handle it. it. It won't do it. It won't let me drag and drop it in to edit it. Um, even if I make it really, really, really short, it, it, it just doesn't do it. And then if I dial it down a little bit, this works fine. And, um, I'm just trying to find how to set it at the max rate so far. Every time I set it, you film it, you, you download it, it doesn't come out right. Um, and that's not a fault to this, to the, to the arc. So it's a fault to my computer. I don't have, um, not my computer, but my editing software. Um, I currently don't have, you know, the budget for 
something like Final Cut or anything like that, especially considering I actually owned it once before and for some reason the previous license I had won't work. Um, so yeah, it, it's really just about um, the high frame rate this thing can do. And when it is done at its best rate, it's pretty cool. I'll do a slow-mo test later. I haven't really found out, found a quality setting that I wanted to do. And when I, when I thought of a really, really cool one and um, wanted to do it, I wanted to do a quick test real quick and see if anybody else had done it and kind of get a few ideas. And the one person who did it, did it exactly how I wanted to do it. And it looks amazing and I just didn't really want to copy what he did or repeat it because he did it real justice. And um, I wish I had the link, but I don't. But if I find it before I finish, um, before I post this, I'll put it below. Um, and you'll just realize that when you watch the video of his example, of the high speed slow-mo that the camera can do, um, it's awesome. So that's one of the really reasons why I like this. Now, um, so hopefully you enjoyed my five likes and five dislikes on the Sony RX. So by the way, I switched, switched cameras while I did this. So if you're wondering where the quality change in angle came from, it's, I'm now filming with the Sony RX. So here, um, once again, uh, thanks to Mark and um, your question. Um, it was kind of really cool coincidence that while I was writing the script for this, um, you asked me this question on my thoughts on this camera. Once again, his, a link to his channel is below. He just did a really cool video on um, vintage lenses. Uh, check it out. It's awesome work, man. Uh, so yeah, before I let you go, don't forget, if you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button below. Um, I'm trying to reach my 100th subscriber by December. Um, that's my goal. And um, also, don't forget to hit that like. And uh, tell your buddies and friends to keep viewing so that I can hit my other goal of 10,000 views before December. Um, currently at 7,400. 7, um, so we're really moving. Uh, especially last week was a real big hit. Thanks all. And don't forget, work hard, play nice.